<sighs> Epic just released the first tech demo for Unreal Engine 5, and ladies and gents, it's kind of breathtaking. You're breathtaking! In it, we see some really impressive stuff like many triangles and moving lights. But seriously, this stuff is actually pretty next level. As I was watching this, I couldn't help but think about how far video games have come, so I pulled up the tech demo for Unreal Engine 1, and you guys, holy progress, Batman, have video games come a long way. We take it for granted now because we have games like Tomb Raider and Final Fantasy VII, but there was a time not so long ago that we had games like Tomb Raider and Final Fantasy VII. I think to really appreciate what we're looking at, we need to understand how we got here. So, I invite you to sit back, relax, and join me on the amazing journey of the Unreal Engine. The Unreal Engine was developed by Tim Sweeney, the founder of Epic Games. He started writing the engine in 1995, but it was publicly debuted in 1998 with the game Unreal. <laughs> It featured cutting edge technology like collision detection, colored lighting, ambient effects like light bloom and fog, tracker music, which means music that plays when you reach specific points, and of course, real time direct illumination. It also had 16 bit color, which meant it could display a lot more colors. Like I would need a whole other video to explain that, just a ton more colors. There was also a level editor called Unreal Ed for editor. But the game Unreal was met with a loose, clammy handshake. The technology was incredible, but the system requirements were too high, and the online gameplay was laggy. <laughs> wow, complaining about lag in 1998? It must have been pretty bad. But then Unreal Tournament came out and fixed all those problems. In 2002, Unreal Engine 2 made its debut. <laughs> there were rendering improvements, meaning it could run levels almost a hundred times more detailed. It also had a skeletal animation system, so the animators could move the bones, which moved the mesh of the body, and particle systems. It first appeared in 2002's America's Army, which is a free multiplayer shooter developed by the US Army as a recruitment device. And then they later used it in Unreal Championship, which was actually one of the first Xbox Live games and the first console game to receive a downloadable patch. Here's another fun fact. While vehicle gameplay was implemented in 2004, in Unreal Tournament 2004, it was actually already working in Unreal Tournament 2003, but it wasn't quite ready. And it wasn't until a company called Psyonix modded the base code that the driving mechanics were actually working. You know Psyonix, they went on to make a little game called Rocket League, and they were actually bought by Epic 15 years later in 2019. Unreal Engine 3 debuted in 2006 with Gears of War for the 360 and Robo Blitz for the PC, which came out on the same day. Over time, Unreal Engine 3 was updated with improved destructible environments, soft body dynamics, large crowd simulations, and real-time global illumination. Unreal Engine 4 was released on a subscription model in March 2014, and the first game to use it was called Daylight, and it was released one month later. A year after that, Epic released Unreal Engine 4 for free for all users. That's right, you can download it now and start using it. What are you waiting for? The link's in the description. This business model of a subscription and later a free service with royalties after a cap has increased their business by a factor of 10. That means they're making 10 times as much money because they're giving away their product for free and just making money off of what other people are making. It's that is good business. Unreal Engine 4 has an updated lighting system, but also has a new coding workflow called Blueprints. This is made so that people can create game behaviors without having to actually use code. They would later update the engine to support huge maps and a large amount of players for a little game called Fortnite. And that brings us to today. Here we're seeing Unreal Engine 5 running on a PlayStation 5 and a tech demo cleverly titled Lumen in the Land of Nanite. And the difference is honestly breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. So let's take a moment and break down what we're seeing here. 
First, there's Nanite, which is their new rendering engine or something that is helping them run all these polygons. Typically, a game engine uses models made by 3D editors for plants and rocks and characters and everything, but Nanite allows you to use 3D pho photogrammetry, pho photogrammetry. Photogrammetry. <laughs> it allows you to use 3D photogrammetry objects as your models right in the system. That means that you can scan an object, convert it to a 3D model, and drop it right into your game. The reason why this wasn't able to be done before is because this process creates a ton of topology or uh, polygons and the computer has to calculate each one of those polygons for every single frame. So the more polygons you have, the slower your game is gonna be. But somehow, <laughs> Nanite is able to run these ridiculously detailed models in a live environment. I mean, even in the demo, they take the time to show that the number of polygons is in a word, ridiculous. <laughs> what he means, he's like showing us that like this is, he says that this is noise, but what he's saying is that like, we are able to see the outline of every triangle here, and there are so many that we can't distinguish anything from anything else, and it's just noise. Then there's Lumen, which is their new lighting engine that apparently can handle completely dynamic light sources. Right now in video games, what you'll find is baked lighting, which means that uh, they go through, they set up all the lights, and then they uh, take a picture of it and project that picture onto the world. So the light, you know, casts its light on walls and on the floor so that the engine doesn't have to render this light every single frame. And that means it can't cast shadows. But with Lumen, the light is always being simulated, which means everything casts a shadow and the light is basically real. This is all super incredible and it's obviously pushing the boundaries of technology, but will it actually work? Well, we'll have to see. The fact is, making a game is really hard and making a tech demo is only slightly less hard. Certainly some moments in this demo really look like actual gameplay, while some seem a little more quick-timey. It, it kind of looks like uh, God of War, actually. But this is a tech demo, not a game. The game version of this would have 10 more levels, enemies to combat, more puzzles to solve, fully voiced NPC characters, more cutscenes. There might just not be time to make every single thing so perfect. The first game to feature Unreal Engine 5 will be Fortnite in 2021, which Epic is using as a kind of testing ground. We can be absolutely sure that Fortnite isn't suddenly going to look like this tech demo, but who knows what Epic will be able to do. More players, a more detailed map, it could be anything. This will be the first time we see Unreal Engine 5 in action, but that will also be when developers get their magic little hands on the engine. We can expect the first games made completely from scratch in Unreal Engine 5 to come out in 2022. Now, here are the tech demos of the previous engine compared with the first game they actually released. As you can see, the tech demos seem to be groundbreaking and the game seemed to be, uh, you know, fine. <laughs> The Unreal Engine has had a huge hand in shaping video games as we know them, and they're now starting to push the boundaries of what computers are capable of. Unreal Engine is already being used by film studios to make their CGI environments more real. The Mandalorian, for example, was filmed on virtual sets projected onto screens through Unreal Engine. Regardless of if the first games can match the real-time graphics of Lumen in the Land of Nanite, the Unreal Engine is empowering designers to do things they've never been able to do before. This is going to translate to more interesting gameplay, or at least more interesting environments. The advancement of this technology feels slow sometimes, but it is coming, and it's going to change our world more and more. If you want to be a part of that, click on the link in the description, which will take you to the Unreal Engine download. It's totally free to use and learn. And if you want to make your own games, that's also free until you make a million dollars. Can you believe that? <laughs> you can use the same engine that made Breath of the Wild right now. 
Epic isn't paying me to say this, I just think it's incredible that this technology is available to you right now. It's crazy. Thanks for stopping by today. If you're like me, the video game world fills you with a sense of wonder and joy, and I just like sharing that feeling. There are new games being made right now that will become the classics we remember fondly or completely change the way we think about games in general. Are video games art? Is early access a scam? I'm gonna ask and try to answer all of these questions and more while keeping you up to date and entertained by the only topic that really matters, video games. <laughs> Click gently on that subscribe button, sit back and remember, always be gaming.